Hey, what's up? My name's Samuel Leeds. I'm a property investor, and right now, in the United Kingdom, but pretty much across the world, the property market is going absolutely crazy. So I wanted to report right now with some facts about what is happening in the property investment space, what house prices are doing, not just in England, but in Ireland, Wales, Scotland, also how the media are not helping the situation, and they're going on about, oh my gosh, there's a boom, people aren't gonna be able to afford to buy houses, they're going up crazy, but actually, the media are part of the problem. Not that it's a problem, it can be. And this is the thing, with property, anything can either be a problem or solution. When I was uh, 17, 18 years old, and the property market was crashing, it was a big problem, and everyone was going, it's a problem, but it was also an opportunity. Right now, there's been a big boom, it's also an opportunity. It depends on what side of the coin you want to be on. Also, I want to talk about Lloyds Bank. Oh my goodness, Lloyds Bank are um, going crazy at the moment, trying to become the biggest private landlord in the UK, which I find very ironic because they're a bank and I'm gonna be talking about that and I'm giving you some facts and stats and information about Lloyds Bank. And then lastly, some people who are complaining in parts of Cornwall, near the beaches. There's a lot of people right now that are looking for bigger houses, second homes, and we're talking about that and the impact that is having in the property investment space. So if you enjoy my YouTube channel, please do me a massive favor, smash the like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and turn on the notification bell because I hit you with regular updates around the property market every single day. I'm always putting content out and I'm spending hours and hours researching this stuff to help you in your journey as a property investor. So the least you can do is subscribe. So do that now, hit the like button, let's get started. Let's start by looking at some stats. The stats and the facts are that right now, house prices are have been rising at a faster rate than they have ever done since the year 2004. House prices have been going up by 2,500 pounds on average per month per house. Which means that if you buy a house, an average house for 250 grand, that every month for the last 12 months, it's been going up two and a half thousand pounds on average every month. That means that if you just happened to buy a house a year ago, you've been making two and a half thousand pounds profit in equity every single month for the entire last 12 months. That is absolutely crazy. On average, properties have gone up by 13.3% in England in the last year. In Northern Ireland, they've gone up by 9%, which is still really high. In Scotland, they've gone up by 12%. And in Wales, bum bum bum, Wales has gone crazy. The average house in Wales has gone up by 16.7% in the last year. Let me just, let me just get, get your head around that. This is not like Bitcoin that's really volatile that goes up and down really quickly. This is pro property prices going up by 10, 15%. Bricks and mortar, still getting the rent of the property as well. I mean, listen, I was saying 12 months ago, buy property, buy property, and everyone was saying, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. Everybody that's waited is now saying, hmm, I've missed the boat. Maybe houses are gonna go down, they're gonna go down, they're gonna go down. And the bottom line is, make sure that when you're buying properties, rather than obsessing over what's gonna happen in the next six, 12 months, because you don't exactly know, you need to buy a property and make sure that it's also giving you cash flow. And then if the value goes up, brilliant. I actually hope that the value of properties, I hope that the market corrects itself soon. I think it will. I think it's probably gonna continue going up, but it's gonna start slowing down. And then I imagine at some point in the near future, house prices are gonna start falling. And when that happens, it's actually a good thing because it means that as a property investor, I can buy prop more properties and I can buy them cheaper which means that my return on investment is better. So whether the properties are going up or whether they're going down, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing or a bad thing. You just need to know what, what, what's happening in the market. Another thing is every area has its own economy. So even when I say England or when I say Wales, Scotland, Wales is a big place, it's a country. England is a big place. So for example, and you can look back at my videos from a year or two ago, I was advising people to buy properties in the northwest of the country. That's where I was buying a lot of my properties. We've been sourcing and selling properties. And a year or two back, I was saying, London isn't the best place to buy. Not only is the return on investment bad, but it's boomed like crazy, it's gonna correct itself. And over the last 12 months, let me give you the stats. So the northwest of England has gone up by over 18%. 
That's even more than Wales. So all these areas where you can buy cheap houses, you can rent them out high, buy low rent high type houses, they have exploded in, in, in equity. And London's only gone up by 6% as opposed to over 18% in the northwest of the country. So those are some of the statistics over what's happened over the last 12 months within the property market. But also, what's happening in the residential market? Why is this happening? Why is London not been rising as much as some other areas? Areas like the northwest of the country and what's happening is a lot of people from within the center of London are moving out to other areas um, during the lockdown people are buying bigger houses they're buying second homes in fact I've actually got a news article that's just come out right now from my London that talks it, it, it's actually saying um, the beautiful seaside village in Cornwall where locals are desperate for Londoners to stop buying second homes. This is a really interesting story actually, I'm gonna speak briefly about this because effectively what's happening is there's been an influx of outsiders setting up holiday homes in the village that's caused property prices to skyrocket. They then named the village which is Polzee. I can't say I've ever heard of that but it looks beautiful. It's in Cornwall and they're writing news articles saying, telling the Londoners, stop buying second homes here. And they're saying, you know, this is where we've got, we have a stunning stretch of sandy beach, um, dubbed one of the finest surfing beaches in the UK. It's no surprise that idyllic village of Polzeeth in Cornwall has become a tourist hub. And then they're saying, stop doing it, London, stop doing it. But it's crazy because it's kind of like reverse psychology because by telling Londoners, stop buying second homes in this beautiful paradise of an area of Cornwall, what's gonna happen is they're gonna continue. But these, these, these kind of areas are becoming really, really, really expensive now. And you know, a lot of Londoners are buying second homes. It's making, it's making the villagers, it's pricing them out of the, of the market. However, my opinion is that the biggest crazy thing that's going on right now is not Londoners buying second homes. You need to Google this, go on Google, and search Lloyd's Bank, okay? Lloyd's Bank, Lloyd's Bank, and then search news, okay, in the news. Look at the news stories about Lloyd's Bank and you will see how they are. Lloyd's Bank aims to be the UK's biggest private landlord by 2025. Lloyd's Bank are trying to become the biggest landlord. Um, then we've got, um, Lloyds Bank aims to be a large UK landlord with over 500 homes, okay? This, this, in my opinion, I have a bit of a problem with this. Now look, this is just my opinion and I'd love to know what you think in the comments. My thinking is, if Lloyds Bank are buying homes to rent out, I see a massive conflict of interest there because they are actively encouraging us to put our money safely with them and the fact that they are investing our money into buying homes and then renting them back to us at not a reduced rent. I just think it's such a massive conflict of interest and not only that but the fact that Lloyds Bank are trying to buy 50,000 homes to rent out that's going to push house prices up and that's going to push people out of the market. They are a massive institution who are spending hundreds of millions of pounds advertising to Joe Bloggs that Joe Bloggs should put their money with them and then it, I, I mean, I don't know about you, can you see the conflict? Can you see the conflict of interest here? Now, if Lloyds Bank were building homes, that would be a different story. I hope they are. Maybe, maybe someone will come out and say, no, they've changed their business plan or that. Because if they were building homes, even me, get this, okay? I'm just a nobody. I am a working class guy, started with paper around money. I'm now 30 years old. I built a little property portfolio. I became financially free, enough for me to live a good life. And then I continued buying homes, and I continued buying homes, and I got to the point where I thought, you know what? I don't need any more homes. I'm getting enough rent to be able to live a really good life, to be able to retire myself, my family, my children, my children's children. What's the point in me trying to monopolize the system and buy loads of homes? What's the point of doing that? And I came to the conclusion, instead of doing that, 
I would build homes. And now that's what I'm doing because there's a shortage of properties in the UK. So to buy and monopolize all the houses when there's a massive shortage and when there's people that can't afford to get on the ladder and they have to rent, to buy and monopolize and then rent back to the people that can't afford and then on top of that, use all the money that you're telling people to invest safely with you and to give them back 0.3% and then buy property investments, which are probably gonna give them a 10, 15, 20%. I just see something twisted in that. Now, I don't know what you think, and I am a capitalist, by the way, but I believe in um, compassionate capitalism, whereby you're actually adding value to the community, not monopolizing the system and actually making it harder for other people. So. I'd love to know your opinion on Lloyds Bank trying to buy 50,000 homes in the UK and also having a view to become the largest private landlord in the UK using our money to do that. I'd, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. Um, that's the news. What's going to happen in the future? Listen, this is what I'll say. Make your own economy, okay? You've got to create your own economy. Do not rely off of the system, the government and the banks and the school curriculums. Don't rely on what they tell you to do for you to be financially independent because if you follow the system, you're gonna end up being a tenant in one of Lloyd's Bank's houses. Don't do that. Educate yourself financially and that's why I do this YouTube channel. I hope you appreciate it and I'll see you guys real soon.